Welcome back to Skull and Bones. In this video, we are going through the ultimate beginner guide. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks to help you out. And the very first one is to get out of the Dell as quick as you possibly can. So if we go into my ship management, you are going to start the game in the Dell, and it's more of a fishing ship than anything else. So as soon as you can, once you've got the materials and everything, you want to get your hands on something like the Badar, because you're going to go from a spear over to cannons. And then eventually through the shipwright, if we quickly go there, you are going to be able to craft bigger and better ships. The one that I'm working towards at the moment, if we have a look at crafting new items, I am currently working on the Bombardier because this is an absolute beast. You've got 37,000 health, you've got 70,000 cargo, and it's even faster than the Badal with a speed of 11 knots and trimming goes up to 14. But the Dow is like a basic starting ship. You want to get out of it as quick as you possibly can. Next up is whenever you go past resources, make sure you grab them without over encumbering yourself because they're going to be used for crafting quests and earning silver. So the things you're going to want are things like coconut. You can also get dew over here. We've got acacia and you'll have things like bog iron and stuff. But whenever you go past resources, make sure you are grabbing them because you never know when they're going to be of value. And next up is to always use your spyglass to scout any other ship that you come across. Because you never know when they're going to be carrying goods you might need. You never know when they're going to have things like treasure maps. So I would ignore the other players. I would just go for the AI ships. But over here, for an example, we have some uncut garnet. We've got some cast iron ingots and some silver. Over in this direction, we've got lamber cloth, fine jute, grilled bread, and silver. In the distance over there, we've got bog iron, coconut, and silver. So make sure you are scouting every single ship that you come across. Next up is taking a look at your commodities. If we go to my warehouse and we filter it to the commodities, you've got things like uncut sapphire, diamonds, you've got firearms, tobacco. There are loads and loads that are available and you'll get these by destroying other ships. And these are really, really important for earning silver, but only sell them to the traders at the outposts if you are really, really desperate. In St. Anne, if we come around here, we're going to have the commodity trader. So if we come over here and we talk, then when we get the option to go to buy and sell, you are going to see either red down arrows or green up. If there are green up, that is a good time to sell them because it means they're paying more than their original value. But I wouldn't recommend actually selling your commodities at all. Instead, if you come over to the job board in St. Anne, if we look at this, you get some quite simple contracts, some of them. Cobalt ingots uh, to a cash for Shelby the Smuggler. Delivering 20 is going to give you nearly 2,000 silver. If you sink rogue ships, you'll get uh, bombard cannons. If you plunder a settlement, until you get a fire and mask and you bring it to the sea people, you get 1,000 silver. Delivering shark leather, you've also got smuggling bog iron. So that's a resource you can just find as you're exploring. That's going to give you 900 silver. I had one for jute, and jute is actually just north of St. Anne. Really, really close by. I had to gather 30. I managed to get like 130, but I took it 2,000 meters away, which isn't actually too long to sail. And I got 900 silver for it. So commodities, because you get like uncut garnets and diamonds and things for some of these jobs as well. But these are going to be your best way of earning silver like when it comes to commodities and trading and things like that. So make sure you're paying attention to this job board. But if you are desperate, you can sell your commodities to the different traders. And next up is to not ignore the shipwrecks that you see at, like over at the edge of islands. If we quickly get out of this area, or at least start making our way out of the area, if I open up the map quickly, if you zoom in, you're going to see shipwrecks. So up here, you've got a small pirate shipwreck. And then over here to the left, you've got a medium forest shipwreck. So if we come over and we take a look, when we get close, you can see the ship there. We've got a torn sail. We've got broken planks, rusty nails. There's loads of loot, but if you get close enough, it's not always going to let you do this. It depends how recently it was actually broken into. Like this one's not actually going to let us at the moment. So I'm going to skip this one. We're going to head over to the west and go to the medium forest shipwreck. When they haven't recently been interacted with, you're going to see this like glow, these little particles in the ship like you can see in this one. But if we approach it, if you get the prompt saying force open, interact with that and break into the shipwreck. 
when we get in there, you are going to get a bunch of different resources. You're going to get repair kits. You're going to get silver. Some of these can give you metal salvage as well. So every shipwreck you find, providing you can force it open, make sure you do so. Because when you get metal salvage, that's really, really important. As two metal salvage is going to be enough to go to the blacksmith in St. Anne and craft 100 cannonballs. So don't ever ignore the shipwrecks. Whenever you come across one, just quickly stop by, force it open with your crowbar, which you'll get very very early in the game like before you even make it to saint anne force it open grab your resources because it's like the fastest way i found to gather a load of different resources early in the game next up is when it comes to combat make sure you are using your different angles if we use the spyglass we've got a broadsider here uncut garnet cast iron ingots and silver if I go into like firing mode, you're going to see these dotted lines. If I fire now, that's using my front weapon. Then if I just turn around a little bit, I can use the weapon at the side. So making sure that you're getting the different angles lets you use more of your weapons, dealing a lot higher damage. It's going to be really beneficial for combat. And like that, I can just loot and then I can get myself out of there and away from all the hostiles. But yeah, make sure you're using the different angles available in your ship because your front weapon might be the most powerful one you've got. But if you're going past those dotted lines and using your sides cannons as well as your front ones and stuff, you're going to be dealing a lot more damage. And next up is making sure that you take advantage of your grilled food or just your food in general. If we slow down a little bit, if we go into my cargo, I have a bunch of different foods on me. I've got grilled shark, hippo, crocodile, there's loads of fish. I've got 45 grilled coconuts on me at the moment. And you'll see it says it restores stamina by 40%. So this means one simple press of right on my D-pad and when I'm trimming, getting the max speed, I can recover stamina really quick. So what I recommend doing is if I press X to bring up the wheel and we go over to the right hand side, we edit. When it comes to your food slot, what you want to do is press select and instead of picking a specific food, if you come down here, you'll see things like raw food, you've got cooked food and then you've got grilled food. If you're grilling all your food at the uh, like cooking places on outposts and stuff like on islands, then I recommend using grilled food because any you've got available will automatically go into the quick slot. And then all you have to do is if we start trimming, you're going to see the green bar for your stamina at the bottom. And when that starts turning red, you're no longer allowed to trim. So you're going to lose speed. Whereas I've got 45 grilled coconuts. They're currently in my quick slot. So all I have to do, I'm using a controller, one press on the right on my D-pad and I get 40% of my stamina back. So I can trim for even longer. And there's only a 15 second cooldown. So make sure that you're grabbing coconuts, you're getting fish and everything like that when you possibly can. Grill it all. Make sure that you've got the quick slot active. And then you can just keep replenishing stamina over and over again, which is going to help you cover like longer distances of sailing in shorter amounts of time because you'll never really run out of stamina. Next up is to not forget to claim your rewards for increasing your infamy rank. If you come over to the mailbox, when you level up your infamy, you are going to have rewards here. These rewards are going to give you a bunch of goodies, including the blueprints to higher level tools like the spyglass. And once crafted at the carpenter, you will be able to scout ships from further away. Instead of having a one-time zoom, the first level, so spyglass 2, goes up to a 1.5 time zoom. And then the carpenter is over here and the final level of the spyglass will give you a two times zoom. So spyglass two is there. You'll need a Rocco planks, uh, bronze ingots and spyglass one. And then once you are a higher level, you'll be able to do spyglass three. So make sure you are claiming your rewards as soon as you get them. At the bottom right, you will see that like, at the moment when you've got an anchor, you can hold B. You've got like a message pop up. You can hold your left stick. When you have new mail, you'll get like a, an envelope sort of thing there. It'll have a yellow icon. So just make sure you're paying attention because missing out on those rewards is a biggie. And then when you are in the screen to manage your ship and everything like that, make use of your warehouse. If you're going to manage cargo, you are going to have a warehouse that's available at every single outpost. And if you look at the bottom right, I currently have 68 out of 170. I'm currently infamy rank 6 and I believe every infamy rank it goes up so that you get extra storage. But even if you have a ship that's got a high storage capacity, you'll see that mine's 20,000 up to a max of 50 items. I still recommend using your warehouse whenever you possibly can because as I said, they're available at every single outpost. The only thing I would really keep on the ship are quest items, repair kits, food, cannonballs, treasure maps. Everything else can just be chucked into your storage. 
And that way you've got room for more resources and stuff as you're out exploring. And next up, if we visit the shipwright, the person that crafts your new ships, if we have a look, at the bottom left of each image, you're going to see a number. That is the ship's base rank. So you'll see, for an example, the Badar starts at rank 1, the Bombardier starts at rank 5. So what you want to do is whenever possible increase your ship rank but it's not just the base rank if we go into the menu where we can manage our ship your weapons your armor and your furniture all play a part if i come in here and for an example if i was to try and use this or like if i was to unequip this then you'll see at the bottom right my rank four which i'm about halfway through there is a little bit of red on that bar meaning i'm going to lose part of my ship rank and then if we go into the armor, you'll see as I change, I mean, the equipment that one is pretty much going to take me down to the beginning of rank four. But it also does it for the weapons too. If I was to switch out this culverin for the repair uh, bombard, then I actually get green. So I go up a little bit in rank. But it's important to increase your ship rank whenever you possibly can through the base ship rank itself and then through your weapons, armor and furniture because you're going to deal more damage. You'll be able to defend yourself better with the armor and stuff and you're just in general overall going to have a better ship. So make sure you're paying attention to it. And then last but definitely not least is treasure maps. These can be given as quest items. They can be given from world events and also from certain ships sailing the sea which is why I say it's so important to use your spyglass and scout other ships. Once you find it, what you're going to have to do is figure out which outpost it's at. The outpost will always stay the same, but there are different locations at the outpost. So for an example, with the Giant's Leap, if I bring up the More menu, you're going to see on the left-hand side an outpost, and the top right is going to show you roughly whereabouts it is. Like, if you find this area on the outpost, you're going to find the treasure. But those will change. There'll be different images in the top right where the like the X marks the spot is. So in order to go and claim the treasure from this, all I need to do is figure out exactly which outpost that is. And once you arrive, it will say treasure is in this outpost. And then all you've got to do is just go around, look for the orange beam that comes out of the floor, stand over the top of it. You'll get a prompt to say dig up treasure chest. You do that, you're going to get all of your goodies. So if I now go to fast travel and I quickly fast travel over there, it's Verona Falls. You are going to see when you arrive, it says treasure is in this outpost. Then once you get close, you'll see the orange beam comes up out of the floor. So we, you press the prompt, we dig up the treasure chest. And once we get inside the chest, we will be given our rewards. So let's have a look. This was just a common. We got 2,000 silver. So it was actually quite good. And I would say it's not too bad getting 2,000 silver. But that's what you need to do for the treasure maps. And as I said, they're given through quest items different world events and there will be random ships sailing the, the waters that will every now and then have a treasure map on them so that was my ultimate beginner guide some tips and tricks to help you guys out in skull and bones and what we're going to do is leave that video there let me know your thoughts and stuff about this game in the comments i will see you guys in the next one i hope you enjoyed it i hope it helped you out thank you for watching